Today, from the archives, we have an interview with Tony Hadley at Let's Rock Festival 2019. From Riot Magazine, and today I'm talking with Tony Hadley. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? All right. Yeah. Just had, uh, just come down from Peterborough. My uh, golf day yesterday. A good golf day. And well, that's well, it was a good golf day because I beat my manager. But other than that, I'm the worst golfer on the planet. But it's a good cause. It's for action medical research. We have a dinner in the evening oh, that's nice. to raise a few quid. And it, to be honest, it's, it's it's grown and grown and grown, and it's almost like a sort of like a reunion. Everyone looks forward to it every year. There's a lot of banter, no one takes it terribly seriously. Mm. And uh, really yeah, it's good, it's kind of nice, yeah. I didn't think from a how are you, I get all that crazy information. Yeah, that's... sorry, I, no, I'm, no, I'm like good. endless waffle. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, what, that's, <clears> what I mean. that's really interesting. I'm not one of those monosyllabic uh, answers. <laughs> it's like, how are you? Good. Oh, okay, I'll move on. But yeah, no, okay, so, where should I start? Okay, I guess you may be wondering, What's Riot Magazine got like got to do with? I guess it's found our ballet and and Tony you, Hadley and, Tony yeah. Hadley and like as a solo artist as well. So I don't know. You have to tell me. <laughs> I'm gonna let you know. Uh, basically, I guess there's been a new resurgence in the last few years with I guess meme culture. Like me, do you know memes? Me- <laughs> so like a meme <clears throat> is like um, a popular kind of trendy thing. So, for example, right. there was a thing where people used to send Rick Astley's song "Never Gonna Give You Up." Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <coughs> yeah so that's a meme. Him. Yeah. So, right, okay. Like that. So, and so songs that I guess a couple of years before they became, I guess, re- a resurgence in like how popular they are. Yeah, yeah. They they were just as not cool, not uncool, but like not currently at the top of the you know okay. of our radar. Yeah. So, for example, with Spandau Ballet, True and Gold specifically yeah. have come back as like almost iconic tracks um, for my generation and I was just wondering what it's like to I guess see your tracks like come back with such a force well it's, it's a bit of a weird one really I mean you know I mean, for a lot of people they're still played on radio but radio 2 or all the, all the gold stations and stuff around the world so they continue being played but it is amazing when you do get I, I think one of the reasons for it that a lot of younger people are getting into sort of I suppose retro music. Yeah. Um, whether we like it or not, the whole social media has changed the way we operate. Certainly, the way we buy records and music, and uh, and with people streaming and downloading. The, you know, I suppose in an instant you've got access to Led Zeppelin, Cream, The Beatles, The Stones, The Spandau, Duran, and I mean even my daughter does it. I mean, um, mm. we were on the. Uh, she's only 12, and she loves music, and she was playing some crummy radio station, which. <laughs> Where every voice was auto tuned, and I said, "For God's sake, can we just play something decent?" And she put ACDC on, and I went, "Aha!" That's brilliant. Better. <laughs> now she's only twelve, and how does she know about ACDC? But she does, and um, and I, I suppose the, the the interesting thing, although artists not necessarily making money out of streaming and Spotify yeah. anymore, um, in the same way we used to, it does allow total accessibility in a nanosecond to a vast catalogue of songs from loads of different decades um, you know you want Frank Sinatra yeah it's kind of a, but what's really interesting is that despite all the social media thing mm. people still want to see live they still want to see theatre they still want to see opera and they I'm still want to see uh, you know pop rock grunge and everything else and and pure pop and um, what's also nicely attached to that is the fact there's a lot of young people that have been either corrupted by their parents or they've just gone retro anyway and you see a lot of younger people in the audience and they're singing along they're singing along to true they're singing on to gold and they're singing on to, along to my new songs as well and i'm like how do you know that <laughs> you know you're, you're you're 18 or 19 so it's a nice feeling and and despite the world changing in a weird way there's some good positives from it it is i feel i feel like it's <clears throat> easier to discover new artists and oh absolutely because like it's just i mean People say to me, you know, sort of, what was it like when you were growing up? And um, and there isn't the fashion thing anymore, and, and there isn't the sort of music in the same way that there was with punk and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, I said to people, well, when I was growing up, you had three television channels: BBC One, BBC Two, ITV. Yeah. You had music and fashion. That's all you had. Um, 
And now you've got the world. If you want to play a war game with someone in Hungary or America or whatever, exactly. you put on your headset and you're in total contact with the rest of the world. So things like the fashion movement and music in the way that it, because that was your badge, mm. it's not the badge of young people today. They've got a different badge. And it's, it's kind of weird. And there's a lot of people you do meet that say, oh God, I wish that, you know, that it was more diverse in terms of fashion and stuff like that. But it's, uh, but it's not. And I, I suppose in a lot of ways we've become musically very conservative. Um, oh no, definitely. I feel like we've definitely, on the radio specifically, I, oh, Jesus. I'm kind of upset by like the, the bands that I kind of listen to mostly. I think some radio music is great. I think some of it's great and deserves to be yeah, yeah. well written. But what I specifically like, I like live instruments. I like seeing live bands. I like to see people yeah. actually doing things. Yeah. And just the fact that I know some of my favorite bands will never hit the radio is quite upsetting almost. Well, it's, it's, it's because the whole thing's become a bit homogenized. I mean, you know, for instance, a good friend of mine, Kevin Lawrence was the, whether you like Heart or, or I think it was Heart, yeah, it was Heart, he was the breakfast show on around uh, the Cambridge area. Mm -hmm. And all the Heart breakfast people have all gone across the, across the country because um, Jamie thinks and Amanda Holden, it's not their fault, and I know Jamie and Amanda and they're lovely people, mm -hmm. but they've now got the slot and so they've literally, they are, that's the hub. And so they got rid of the breakfast crew around the whole of the country. So unfortunately that takes away any sense of individuality and local news issues and stuff like that. Um, which I think is a shame, but, but it's, it's the same. I mean, you know, the way they program radio now is it's just totally generic. Yeah. And it's, it's the same format for so many radio stations. Um, I hate it personally. I hate a lot of the DJs because they just sound like, home count is white boys who just all sound the same yep there you go uh, that's the one we need some diversity and, uh, I think, yeah. yeah and I, I don't i don't like it i mean I've, I've got a radio show bbc three counties i mean i'm you know got on 59 but but what I, I don't like that whole retro thing where everyone says oh the 80s is the best oh that was the best decade and all that crap yeah it was brilliant it was great yeah. it was economically but politically really diverse and musically diverse mm. but at the same time, there's good music, good music around today, and so, so on, on my radio show, we do try and play a lot of new stuff. So we might play, I don't know, the Beatles and you know whatever we play, the Weather Girls and stuff like. Oh, classic. But then we'll play sort of, we will play younger music as well. And um, artists, found a song uh, the other day, but I can't remember the name of the band, but Dope on a Rope, which is kind of, yeah, it's kind of a cool song. Oh, cool. <laughs> What and kind of, oh, sorry. Well, it's a kind of like sort of grungy indie song. Oh, that's fun. Called Dope on a Rope. I think they're an American band. And so we're always looking for new stuff. We also got BBC Music mm. introducing. So we get local bands. Uh, we record them and, and, then, and then say, look, this is a local band to try and promote new music. Definitely. And there's some good stuff out there. That, that is after I've got... I've, I know like lots about small, I guess, rock scenes. I'd love to chat with you about that. Um, maybe separately rather than <laughs> going crazy with it. Yeah, but yeah. Um, what I guess then in the new music scene in the last five, ten years, are there any artists you're like looking at and thinking, oh no, they're going to be a, I guess, a classic or a great in a few years, or is there anything that is even like tickling a fancy a little bit? Well, the sort of stuff I'm into. I mean, um, I mean, I like pop. I do like pop, mm. and um, so I'll listen to all the pop stuff. And then, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a massive, like, Killers fan. Classic. Panic yeah. at the Disco, yep. Kaisers, <laughs> Scripts, Imagine Dragons, AWOL Nation. Mm. That, that's my kind of music. That, that is my happiness music, you know. So, and I'm, so any bands that come along, like, as my friend's got, um, uh, he's our old keyboard player, his young, uh, young lads are called Butterfly. And they're kind of like a sort of kind of trippy 60s kind of band. And so they're, they're, they're really cool. We played them on the, on the radio the other day. So they're coming up. Um, I think every band and every artist, um, right, okay, let me rewind slightly. Yeah, bold statement it's about to really play. difficult for young people to make it in the music business today. Absolutely. You're not making any money out of selling records. Yep. Uh, if you sign a big record deal, record companies want a 360 deal, they want a part of your publishing, merch, yeah. uh, and your live work as well. So when it, And then you've got a manager on top. So these bands are not going to make any money at all. We, we met a young band um, a little while ago, and they've, they've got an album, they have their second album, and they're all doing mini-cabbing and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's not like when I signed a deal, there was enough money in it that, that not bundles of money, but 
that we could concentrate wholly on the music. And a lot of these young bands just cannot afford it. Also, another thing that really pisses me off is that pubs and clubs are charging musicians to yeah. come and play. That is a full joke. That's Which the is, worst. You know, they haven't got any money anyway. <laughs> you know, you know, a set of bass strings or guitar strings is a small fortune. Yeah. And and then you're charging, whether even if it's thirty quid. You know, that's, and it's that's kind more. of. So I, I I think it's tough for young bands and young artists out there, and um, uh, you know, it'd be it'd be you know, anyone out there that can help out. You know, for instance, don't charge. You know, don't charge bands to come and play in your venue for God's sake. I think it's criminal. We've got to kill paid to play. And also, radio, radio needs, especially the commercial stations, needs to become a little bit more diverse. And like I say, it's home county's white boy, and I, I just, to me, it's boring. It bores the pants off me. Yeah, you can change the radio station. Because everybody the sounds the same. Too. Yeah. You That's know, awesome. and there's the morning crew, and everyone laughs at the banal jokes and everything else. Come on, come up with a new format for God's sake. So. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so literally next week I've got a band from Arizona. They literally have no money. They're staying at my house <laughs> and then they're going to be playing a gig after. They're yeah. a really great band. They're called Dolskin. I do recommend them. They, I'll write it yeah, in my Yeah, write it thing. down. They are, they're, they're incredible. They are What's signed the, Are they signed? Right, okay. Let me just put... They're called New... I'll put New Band because I'll play them on the radio. Yeah, they would literally... Uh, they'd love new, that. I can play literally and anything we can't get, we go onto YouTube or whatever so we get a live... Don't so Spotify. We, yeah. Oh, it's so a new band. Doll skin. D-O-L-L. D-O-L-L-S-K-I. Skin. skin, yes. Doll skin, that's, yeah. that's they're a really bit spooky. <laughs> they're really good. They're basically an, an all, I guess, all girl band that play their own instruments, play rock. They do yeah. like clubs and stuff and it's like, they're really great. Yeah, I'll, I'll play them on, next time I'm doing a show, I'll, I'll, I'll drum them up and play them up. There you go. It's Help good. each other out in the industry out here. Well, like I say, it's a difficult game. It's never been easy. Mm. The music business has always been tough, but I do think it's a lot. For me, listen, I've been around 40 years. Mm. I, I keep kicking myself because I'm, I'm already booked up till next October next oh, wow. year, which is great. And, 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 and I've, I've done relatively well out of the music business. But it's it's a hot it's a nasty business as well. As a lot of people get ripped off, I've been ripped off. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's it's a just watch yourselves. Yeah, it it is quite um, fierce and difficult, I guess. Um, There's a lot of greedy people out there, and it doesn't need to be. Uh, I, you know, people just need to be honest and upfront. I wish it could all just be like that, to be honest. So do I. Um, what what is different, I guess, about now? I was thinking about this <coughs> earlier today. Yeah. Um, I guess the last time that I think a new genre was created because like it's like oh we got new romantics like we've yeah, got yeah. punk we got all these things and then I guess was in the 2000s with like emo that was it that was the last time I saw anything I can't like emo Ke chemical chemical romance yeah. and stuff like that do you yeah. not like that no I do I kind of like that sort of stuff it's really good it's uh, like really good but like yeah it's a it's a complicated genre because it's I guess because there's a predominantly female or younger fan base of like a it's kind of effeminate even the, the men are quite feminine it was just looked down on quite a lot at the time oh really and like I guess all the bands are quite inv invalidated for like what they actually do because they're very talented but they're yeah I, I quite liked it yeah some people used to be really put off by it I, I thought it was pretty good but um God, what's yeah I, I know what you're referring to it, it, it's really <sighs> right I think the problem is there were always movements in music and fashion because there was nothing else. That's, yeah. if you look at Sinatra with the Bobby Soxers, okay, mm. with the Screaming Girls with Sinatra, and their fashion statements, they used to wear kind of outflying skirts with, with little white socks, mm. that's why they're called the Bobby Soxers. Oh, yeah. Then you had the, the, the rock and roll area with Bill Haley and the Comets and Little, little Richard and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you had that kind of rock look. Yeah. You know, then it went on to the Beatles and the mods, the rockers, and the then, hippies, like, the more punk. Well glam rock yeah. and because there was nothing else uh, it's it's ri and also the other factor is it's very difficult to shock people back in the 60s 70s 80s there was a sh there was a shock ability there was a generational shock ability mm. where you could you could offend the older generation yeah. which is kind of being young is what it's all about you want yeah. people to look at you and, and point and say my good god let's put them <laughs> in the army you know or whatever and that's what you do you know I, I would walk around like Captain Bloody Scarlet or something mm. from Robin Hood so so there is always a, a, a shock ability factor but now we live in an age you know I'm of the generation that, does anything shock me not really anything shock you 
I mean, not, not really. Much. Nudity, swearing. No, it's all there. It's Different all gender, there. sexuality. Yeah, like, where do we go it's, now? It's all out there. So where do we go now? So, in terms of music and fashion, I think it's difficult. We, like I say, we have become very, very conservative. Oh. oh yeah, sorry, making you talk so much. This is this is so interesting. Sorry. So I, I'll like sorry. I'll bring it to an end. No, that's okay. I'll bring it so to an end because we have been talking for a bit. But yeah, it's yeah. I guess where, where do we go now? The music industry is just where do we go in now? In a bit of a peculiar place, and I think life would be no so one knows what to do. That's the problem. No one, the record companies don't know. Oh, I tell you what, let's put you on Loose Women. No, it's not going to sell a record. Yeah, it's, it doesn't sell a job. Yeah, it's a bit of publicity, but it doesn't sell, you know. Mm. Um, so I mean, I think I think you know, radio is all powerful again. TV, I don't think means anything anymore. Um, and I believe in making new music because I think you have to just for your sanity. Yeah. You know, singing True Girl Barricades, brilliant, but singing new stuff on stage as well, yeah, super brilliant. You must have sung them thousands yeah. of times. Yeah, and I don't mind, and I love yeah. singing them. I don't never get bored. But working on new material for next year when it's my 40th anniversary, that's really exciting. So, so when's this? Have you got any idea when this new material is coming out? Well, I start releasing. I would think about spring next year. Spring, okay. So, Watch spring out, next everyone. Year, spring yes. next year. Spring next year. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, well, I think people were a bit shocked. I, I album out last year, and mm. I'm still promoting it around the world, but talking to the moon, and a lot of people kind of, you know, thought. I think they thought, oh, it's going to be just a medio, mediocre kind of slushy ballads album or something, and actually, people have gone. Jesus, right, okay, there's a lot. Well, the thing, yeah, the thing is, I like a lot of anthemic songs, I'm massively into, I was hugely into Queen and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they're great. And um, so I love anthemic songs, but I also listen to new music because I'm always nicking production ideas. There you go, that's you know? the one. But I think, so, yeah, whilst I think the industry has like, been first open with all these new like things, it's also been closed off because of nothing shops us anymore. Yeah. I guess on that note, <laughs> On that you. note, well, listen, thank you, it's been good. Good to talk about new stuff. Yeah, good chat. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, watch out for spring, I guess. <laughs> Thank you.